And welcome everybody on YouTube here for the second installment of our Ravnica Allegiance set review for Blue. Oh, nice PSA for everyone there. We'll go ahead and say this too. PSA for everyone. If you if you uh, use Play Allegiance in uh, in Magic Arena as a coupon code, you'll get three free packs. So that's Play Allegiance, one word with the P and the A capitalized. Uh, I would I would assume that'd be later on the seventeenth um, for the free packs. So that's that's what I assume. Yeah, from the seventeenth onward. Okay, so we're gonna be going through the thirty blue cards in Ravnica Allegiance and giving each one a a grade in standard. So uh, just kind of go over the grading scale again. If you're just watch just tuning in for this one. Uh, we have A through F. A is a format all-star among multiple archetypes. Think Jade Light Ranger, Lava Coil, Adanto Vanguard, Ravenous Jupacabra, Search for Escanta. Could be better than an A. Could be Teferi or Niv Mizzet. Could be an A plus. History Benalia. Uh, we have B's are format staples among multiple archetypes, including sideboards or a defining card in a single highly played archetype. So we'll look at cards like Merfolk Branchwalker, Lightning Strike, Takatli Honor Guard, Duress, or Sinister Sabotage. A C is a card that sees a regular amount of play in the format, or is an important card in a singly highly played archetype. So cards like Druid of the Cowl, Shock, Dauntless Bodyguard, Playcrafter, Radical Idea. These are cards that you, that you certainly see a decent amount in the in the format while you play games of Magic. Uh, now this is a grading scale that that I just made for uh, these reviews. Uh, a D is a card that sees a slight, a very slight amount of play in the format, or has a fringe archetype built around it. So I have like Crushing Canopy as like a, a niche sideboard card, uh, Gutter Snipe, Invoke the Divine, same kind of thing there. Uh, Lich's Mastery is a card that has an, a fringe archetype built around it. Lookout's Dispersal. I'd even have like Haphazard Bombardment was another card that I gave as an example for this before. Or an F is a card that sees just no play in the format. These are a lot of draft commons or uh, some rares such as like Old Growth Dryads, Alpine Moon, A Johnny's Last Stand, Fraying Omnipotence, and Fleet Swallower. So there we go. E is not a grade, no. It's kind of going like by the American grading system, uh, American uh, school grading system. There's no E. Hey, B, B Path. Um, all right, so let's get started with blue. So we're starting with the common Arrester's admon Admonition. Two and a blue, which that means that it's a three uh, CMC card, to kind of cover that again. So that means it's two generic and one blue mana, whenever I say it like that. So two and a blue for an instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand, and it has addendum. If you cast the spell during your main phase, you draw a card. So is, is it worth it to, to play? So the instant speed version of this card is certainly not worth it is it worth it to to have two and a blue sorcery speed bounce a creature and draw a card can't really see that um but uh yeah can't really see that happening um so we're gonna go ahead and give this an f don't think this will be played cards that draw a card you know they have a ch they have a shot they have a shot but all right, we have a rare up next, Benthic Biomancer. This is a Merfolk Wizard Mutant. By the way, I am, I'm not really a fan of Simic just having so many creature types, by the way. Not really a fan of everything in Simic having like three creature types, it's, but this one's not so bad. Merfolk and Wizard are like normal things, so that's, that's fine with me. Um, anyway, this is a blue for a 1-1 one -one that has one in a blue, adapt one. If this creature has no one one counters on it, put a one one counter on it. That's that's adapt. I'm not gonna read the adapt keyword every single time, but that is that's what that does. I'm sure you, you know that though if you're watching this. Whenever one or more one one counters are put on Benthic Biomancer, draw a card, then discard a card. This is a good card. This is a pretty good card. Um one mana creatures like just one mana spells in general are certainly at a premium in standard, right? Like you you want um, a lot of one mana creatures in standard. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, Perfinix. Um, I I don't know if the mutant keyword is new or creature type. I haven't. I don't really recognize or I can't think of like other creatures that are mutants. 
Um, but yeah, this is this is a decent card. And like, you know, talk about maybe like a mono blue deck, like where where you want that. The thing, the problem with this card is it doesn't have any kind of evasion. So, you know, it's just like a regular one one, and then you can turn it into a two two. But it doesn't have any kind of evasion. Something that I am more excited about this though is if you're playing this with other cards that put counters on it. Maybe like I think this is a good card for a Merfolk deck, like where you have River Herald's Boon that puts a counter on it, and um, whenever you put the the counter on it, you get you go ahead and draw a card, discard a card. Maybe you play this in a blue white kind of deck where you have a Johnny Adversary Tyrants, where you take up on a Johnny, put a counter on on this Biomancer, and you go ahead and draw a card dis- and discard a card. Maybe have it with like that that last instant that we just had, where you know you make your creatures indestructible and you put a counter on it. I don't know. It's it's only a one mana card, so like the floor is uh, not too low. Like when you have like a, a one mana one one. So no, River Herald's Boon will I think only draw one because I think it puts both the counters on at the same time, and it does say whenever one or more one one counters are on. So I think it would put both counters on at the same time. I believe if you put both on Benthic Biomancer. Uh, good point, Bear Army. It's very synergistic with Deep Root Elite from Merfolk also. Uh, with Deep Root Elite, whenever you play Merfolk, you put counters on stuff. And so then you can so then you can have your Merfolk deck where you're not just drawing a bunch of lands because you can kind of filter through like your lands and just make sure you keep drawing more gas. So I like this card quite a bit. Um, I think you could see uh, a decent amount of play in the format. Um, being an important card in a single highly played archetype, this looks like definition of a C to me uh, but maybe even just a little better I'm going to go C plus because I could see it going in some different things so Benthic Biomancer going with the C plus so you, you said you'd probably play in a slower Merfolk deck I could see even just playing in a faster Merfolk deck with you know like River Herald's Boon is certainly a fast card like that so yeah I like it C plus um, you put counters on it with Kumena you know, you get to loot away also if you're using Kumena to put counters on your creatures. So there we go. Our next card is a common Chillbringer, 4 and a blue, 3-3 three, three flying. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. It doesn't untap during your next controller's, or your controller's next untap step. That is an F. Uh, next card is a common also, Clear the Mind. Two in a blue, sorcery, target player shuffles their graveyard into their library, draw a card. This is certainly some good graveyard hate. This is one of the better graveyard hate cards we've seen in Standard in a while. I think this is, like, imagine playing this against, like, a, a Crackling Drake deck. You just shuffle their graveyard into their library, you get to draw a card. So, like, three mana draw a card is obviously not a good rate, but it's not, you know, like, horrendous. It replaces itself. Then you turn like their crackling drakes and Nigma drakes into being zero power. Um, yeah, it did sorcery, but that's still not that bad. Um, and there's the new there's the new blue creature that also cares about the instants and sorceries in your graveyard, and that could, this could shuffle that back. It's real good against fine finality stuff like that. Uh, there's more kind of reanimation effects. I'm going to go with the D here. You know, I could see this see a slight amount of play in the format as like a, a cyborg card that could see a slight amount of play. Um, yeah, so I'm going D. Yeah, this is the full set. Yep. Uh, no, there there are 259 cards. You can see like each card has a number. Like that was card number 34. This is card number 35 out of 259 and so on. Yep, this is the, the whole set. Um a lot of the set is multicolor. You know, only there's 30 cards of each color, so that's only 150. And so there are a whole lot of multicolor cards. Yeah, Crackling Drake would see exiled spells, so it wouldn't necessarily put it down to zero if they have spells in exile. Um, yeah. Um, next card is an uncommon Code of Constraint, two in a blue instant. Target creature gets minus four, minus zero until end of turn. Draw a card, and it has addendum. If you cast a spell during your main phase, tap target creature, and it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. That is certainly enough. Next card is a common Coral Commando. Two and a blue for a 3-2 Merfolk Warrior. That's it, and that's enough. Yeah, 259 does count land. So all, like, the different, like, the... The com like the p- different versions of planes and islands and stuff like that are, are in there and everything. 
Um, next card is uncommon. Essence Captor. You, you, for an instant, counter target creature spell, put a 1-1 one, one counter on up to one target creature you control. So this is a better version than Essence Scatter for mono blue aggro. Is any other deck going to possibly play this? I don't. I don't know. We'd, you'd have to. So you'd have to have be a blue aggressive deck, and and you'd have to be able to be able to have blue blue as your mana cost and not be too worried about it. I think like maybe Demir, like a Demir aggro deck, or Drakes. Okay. Yeah, putting this on like a crackling Drake, making it five five toughness, then lava coils don't kill it anymore. Simic could play this. That's that's a good point. Simic could Simic could definitely play this. Like this could definitely be a Merfolk card in Simic, where you put your counter on your Benthic Biomancer, and then go ahead and loot. That that does work really well with Benthic Biomancer that we were just going over a little bit ago. Yeah. Hey Jason, happy Friday. So, uh, we we see like some grades of like B minus is looking like a pop popular grade in the chat here. I'm not sure if I want to go that high. I, I'm thinking this is more like a C. It sees a little bit of a play, you know. Like I have like radical idea as a C. I don't think this is going to be seeing like more things, more play than radical idea. But you know, like we don't see essence scatter, see a ton of play right now. But for those decks, this is certainly better than essence scatter. Um, you know, like that plus one plus one counter is certainly not neg negligible. Negligible. There we go. We're getting there. I'm going to go with the C for Essence Captor. That sounds like a good C. Next card's also an uncommon. Eyes Everywhere. Two blue for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. So that's certainly a, a beneficial thing to be doing every single turn. Like we've seen like Searcher's Canta is, you know, kind of like the scry one every single turn. Um, so yeah, it's like a, a budget Searcher's Canta there. So that's, that's certainly... Uh, nice and it's three mana but it has another ability for five and a blue you can exchange control of eyes everywhere and target non-land permanent activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery that could be really nice so if your opponent let's say let's say you have this in your deck against is it drakes or whatever you or like you know, just like the new versions of Is It Drakes, they play. Somebody plays Niv Mizzet, and you just be like, "Hey, I'll take your Niv Mizzet. You can have my eyes everywhere." That's pretty sweet. Yeah, you could take a Planeswalker. Yeah, you could take take Planeswalkers. It caught. It's six mana to activate, and it's also three mana enchantment. So I'm not actually like thinking this is going to see too much play. But like that's against decks that don't deal with enchantments very well. Against maybe like kind of like Demir and Is It base decks that don't really have answers to enchantments. This could be a card against those kind of decks. Overall though, I do think standard's gonna be better than what it was the the previous format with like the the addition of the new set and everything. Overall I don't think this is gonna see much play at all. I'm gonna give this a, a D mm, D. We're gonna go with the D here, but uh yeah. It you know there there's some like real high upside with this card. You know, you can really dream big with this card. Um Yeah, and then yeah, your if your opponent oh that's true. If you do give it to a, a blue deck, they can just reactivate it. But if you give it to a non-blue deck, they won't be able to reactivate it. Yeah, that's a good point. Those those kind of decks would just be able to go back to you. So yeah, maybe maybe D. <laughs> Not good against Tristani. Not good against Tristani at all. All right, our next card. Uh, is a common fairy duelist one in a blue for a one two flash flying when fairy duelist enters the battlefield target creature and opponent controls gain gets minus two minus zero until end of turn kind of comparing this to like merfolk trickster as like a flash flying card for like the blue aggro decks this cer certainly looks worse it does have flying though um it doesn't have any like really good creature types with only being a fairy rogue I'm thinking this is an F. I don't I don't see that replacing any 
any cards in standard. And I, I feel like Night Veil vale Sprite's a better card, even though Night Veil vale Sprite doesn't have flash, but like the ability to attack and surveil one every, every turn. And Night Veil vale Sprite doesn't, doesn't uh, see much play at all. All right, moving on to card number 40, 40 cards through. Uh, yeah, 2 1, it would be much, much better. Yeah. All right, this is an uncommon Gateway Sneak. Two and a blue for a 1-3. Whenever a gate enters the battlefield under your control, Gateway Sneak can't be blocked this turn. Whenever Gateway Sneak deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. The first line, I'm I'm not interested in too much. You know, you have to play gates in your deck. Come on, this is standard. You don't need to play gates. That last line, though. Deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. That's intriguing. That's intriguing. What if what if you're playing like a, a blue control mirror where you're like playing creatureless and then out of your sideboard you throw in some gateway sneaks in in out of your sideboard where your opponent your opponent like takes their removal out and you just play like this one three and you just deal damage to them, draw a card. And like each turn you're just pinging them, drawing a card, and you're just drawing a card for free every turn. Is that is that like a realistic scenario that could happen? Ice of Sun says, hey, Todd, I just have to say I finally got my first seven wins and constructed best of one last night. Way to go. Way to go. So, <laughs> Zerg says, no, that's not something that can happen. Um, and there's better stuff for three mana. Yeah, there's probably better things for three mana. So, I would normally give this card an F. Like, the gates, I don't don't care about. Um, would you really take sideboard slots for it? Maybe. I mean... Like it's kind of comparable to Mystic Archaeologist that that uh, you know I teamed with Jim Davis for um, a, a standard um, or a team team event where he was playing Mystic Archaeologist and like as the in his sideboard with blue white control as like that card that he'd just be able to pay five mana and draw two cards like as opponents would just never deal with it and you just keep on hitting them for two. What if you just don't have to spend the mana and you just get to hit them for one and just draw a card every turn? I don't know. So yeah. Legion War Boss certainly ends games faster. This, I don't know, draws cards and drawing cards is sweet. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with an D minus. D minus. I was thinking between D minus and F plus. But yeah, normally I wouldn't want that that top one, but I could see I could see that being on the battlefield drawing some cards. I could see it. Alright, we got a comment here. Homongulus. Four and a blue for a 2-5 hex proof. F. Cool art. Homonguluses are cool, but nope. Good cool card. F in standard. Alright, we got a rare. And this is a this is some good art also. I, I love the art of this card. Mass manipulation. X X blue 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 blue. That's four blue and then two X's. Gain control of X target creatures and or planeswalkers. <laughs> Fibble fip. The last one. Whew. Nice art. Okay. So let's let's kind of break down like what's what's going on. So if we're taking one creature or planeswalker, you have to spend six mana. So we know like how like six mana in standard, that's a ton. Like think about your six mana cards. You're talking Carnage Tyrant, Niv Mizzet. Right, like those are your six mana spells. Six mana, you have to be doing something awesome. You know, finality, six mana spell. Six mana spells need to be great. Taking their creature or planeswalker, that's certainly good. That's certainly good. You know, like your opponent has a Teferi, you take their Teferi. That's worth six mana, certainly. Yeah, and you also have to have four blue. So that's pretty hard to play too. Where you really get interesting if you can take two things. So you're at eight mana for two, right? Like if you can take two things with mass manipulation, that costs eight mana. So you have to be playing some kind of deck where you can re reliably get to eight mana. I think something that you could do with this is maybe how we were talking about with the uh, the Tithe card earlier um, in white, where nobody's going to be paying two and everybody's going to allow you to have treasures. What can you use all those treasures on? If you're just getting a lot of treasures with that white enchantment, what can be what can you be using 
those treasures on? Well, you can be using them on like mass manipulation. Take a bunch of things. You'll have your blue mana. Your treasures can add your blue mana. That kind of stuff. Um, it can be countered easily. It is. It is pretty situational for the cost. Maybe it's a sideboard card against decks with lots of creatures and planeswalkers. You know, maybe against gruel decks, something. Of course, you you would probably want to pair this with like sweepers, things to to stay alive. So maybe you know you're like blue white control, where, uh, you know you have this in your sideboard. Um, chromatic black in mastermind acquisition sideboard. Okay, yeah, your your mastermind acquisition sideboard in chromatic black where you have all the blue mana, and if it's just late game, and you've, like, flipped treasure map, you got, like, some treasures, you can ask acquisition for this. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is better than in Bolas's Clutches. In Bolas's Clutches saw no play. I think this is better than that because of the ability to gain many things. Uh, one, and two with some other good enablers, especially, like, that white enchantment. Um... Yeah, you could also yeah you could play Gilded Lotus like if you want to. That's the thing. There are a lot of good ramp spells like Gilded Lotus is enough. It's a great ramp spell, but there's not there hasn't been things to like spend lots and lots of mana on these days in standard. Um, things are that great. So yeah, uh, how does this work with Omniscience? You no with Omniscience, you you just have to spend the regular mana cost. It doesn't do like with Omniscience, you don't get to pay X. So Omniscience would just be like. X is always zero with omniscience, so it would just not do anything. So you'd have to just use your regular mana still. Simic ramp could definitely be a thing. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I'm basically this is the kind of card that you look at. You could you could see this seeing no play. Like this could certainly see no play. But I could also see this kind of seeing play. I'm gonna go with a I'm gonna go with a a, a D. I think this is kind of like your Lich's mastery type thing. You kind of have to build around this. Um, man, no, I mean, this could go in the sideboard card of just control decks, though, too. So, either D plus or C minus. Is it closer to a D or a C? Probably closer to a D. So, we're going to go D plus. So, that could certainly, certainly see some play. All right, let's go with our mythic. What's our blue mythic? Mes Mesmerizing Benthide. Three blue blue for a four five when mesmerizing... Mesmerizing Benthid. Benthid? Let's go with that. Mesmerizing Benthid enters the battlefield. Create two O2 blue illusion creature tokens with whenever this creature blocks a creature. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Mesmerizing Benthid has hexproof as long as you control an illusion. I actually kind of like this card. You know, and Wadika says, I like this Octo Man. So I think. A card that the card that this reminds me of is um, Ishkana. This looks like the new Ishkana to me. Ishkana was an important uh, green mythic that had there was three green green for a three five that made three one two spiders and it had an activated ability. I think this is worse than Ishkana, but it's similar. Um, or, okay, yeah, Drowner of Hope is another good comparison here. Um, but yeah, five mana, four, five, where you make a couple couple other creature tokens. Um, if the new Birthing Pod creature, which I should learn that creature's name, but if that creature... Uh, no, Ishkanah had... Well, it had... Yeah, the, the activated ability was, was great, but it had... Like I guess it had more power if you add up all the things. Um... If, if the new birthing pod creature ever becomes a thing, this is something you can birthing pod into and birthing pod away. You know, like you can turn a four into this thing, make some tokens to be able to block to give you more time and then turn this five into some whatever sweet six you want to turn into. Um, also, octopus synergy with Slin Voda. I guess that's true. Yeah, it's not legendary, so that's de definitely good. You can be throwing out a bunch of mesmerizing benthids into play. The tokens are very good blockers. It really slows the opponent down quite a bit. They don't have, like, reach or anything like that. Like, the spiders having reach with Ishkana was really nice. Um, but, yeah. So, this is the kind of card, like, that doesn't look very... Like, it doesn't look super surprising when you read it. But I could certainly see some some places for this. Uh, it's definitely a slow card. Um, yeah. Comparing it to Murmuring Mystic that makes birds you know this is 
there are certainly different things. Let's just go into more of a creature deck. Um, you know, like a, a creature filled deck. I don't know. I'm going to give this a C. I I'm going to give Mesmerizing ben Benthet a C. This is a card that could surprise some people, and actually, it could find a home. And uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see. I'm I'm giving this a C. If you have, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna give it a C. C sounds good. Next up for a common persistent petitioners, one in a blue for a one three human advisor. Pay one and tap. Target player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. Or you can just tap four untapped advisors you control. Target player puts the top 12 cards of their library into their graveyard. That's a lot. A deck can have any number of named persistent petitioners. All right, this is this is the definition of a D. It's gonna be it's gonna have a fringe archetype built around it. You can have like your mill deck built around with persistent petitioners. Very niche. Um, could be definitely like the mill the jank mill deck. Um, also, yeah, good point, Sunshine, on the previous card. Octopus, flavorsome for the, the last one. But yeah, definition of a D. You may play against somebody at FNM with that, and mills them out. Um, I'm sure people are going to be trying to draft. Like, this this could be an on, like, this honestly could be a draft strategy, depending on how slow the draft format is or how defensive a deck you, you can make, even with just, like, the other ability of just, like, every turn mill an opponent's card for one. Could be a, a draft strategy, but yeah. All right, we got a rare uh, precognitive perception. Three blue blue for an instant. Draw three cards. Addendum: If you cast a spell during your main phase, instead scry three, then draw three. I like this card a lot. Um. So, is this better than Chemister's Insight? I mean, I guess it's it's different. You know, they they have different mana costs and everything. Five is certainly a lot more than four. Uh, five is a whole lot of mana, but just playing this during your main phase, scry three, draw three, that is awesome. Good point with Vinny Chase. Vinny Chase has Wilderness Reclamation, Bant Turbo Fog. I love this there. I love this with Wilderness Reclamation. Wilderness Reclamation, you certainly need things to um, not only... You need plenty of instants with Wilderness Reclamation, so you can use your mana um, that you get to untap. But so not only do you want lots of instants, but you also want to be using your mana on your main phase too. And if your deck's just full of instants, like your instants kind of get weaker if you're using them on your main phase. This is the kind of card that that just absolutely loves Wilder's Reclamation. If you use it during your main phase, you get paid off with a Scry Three. If you use it as the instant after you untap because you play like a Teferi or something, you're still good there. It's awesome there. Um, yeah. Okay. So Alien Toy Shop says I can't see it replacing Chemisters. Um, Saren says Chemistry's draws two. Uh, good question. Is this better than Secrets of the Golden City? I would think so because like the instant speed is is certainly uh, very crucial in blue decks. Um, but yeah, I I am thinking this card could see a lot of play. I I'm close to going with a B on this. You know, Bs are cards like with blue. I have like Sinister Sabotage. Maybe a little less than that. Maybe B minus. Um, but pretty pretty close. Like scry three, then draw three is awesome. Maybe I'm gonna go with the B. I'm going B. This card has a lot of potential. Yeah, B B minus maybe. We're right there. Yeah, you probably don't want to put four of that kind of card in your deck. Maybe with wilderness Rec reclamation though. Like maybe that's just like a, a card that just breaks wilderness reclamation. Because the thing like with wilderness reclamation, this card. This just, like, scry three, then draw three. You get to find, like, if you're playing, like, the Nexus of Fate deck, you get to just find Nexus of Fate so fast with scry three, draw three. Yeah. That's... All right, anyway. Next card. Common, prying eyes, four, blue, blue, instant, draw four, then discard two. That is an F. Next card. Uh, how do how do we pronounce this? Uh, Terramander? Is it, is it just, like, there's the P silent, right? It's just Terramander? That that sounds like what I what I would assume. Yeah, okay, yeah. Terramander. Uh this is an uncommon blue for a one one Salamander Drake flying. Uh and it has the ability for seven in a blue, you you may adapt four, but that ability costs one less to activate for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. This card is scary. This is probably my least 
I don't know. This may be my least favorite card in the set. Just from like, I'm going to die to this card a ton. This card is going to kill me so much <laughs> all the time. I'm going to have like my my defensive ground creatures. I'm going to be playing my my mesmerizing benthids. And I'm going to be like, hey, cool. I got this four five and some O twos. And my opponent's going to be like, yeah, whatever. Five five flyers are dead. And I'm going to be like, no, I'm dead. Yeah. Uh, is this card in the older formats? Is this good in modern or legacy? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, remember, you don't need you don't actually need like the seven spells there. Uh, you don't have to just play one to adapt four. You know, you can pay two, three, four mana to adapt it also. Um, but yeah, this is uh, definitely a scary card. Um, I'm not sure if like mono blue aggro would just throw four of these in the deck. I mean, you know, they don't have usually like usually it takes like a long time for them to get like a bunch of instants and sorceries in their deck. I don't know if they're going to want just to put those in, but this is certainly the kind of build around card uh, for like, you know, like Drake style decks. Uh, one is a cheaper thing. Um, so yeah, Saren says this kind of reminds me of the blue version of Snubhorn in a way. I could, that's actually a pretty good comparison. Snubhorn kind of like that. Um, it is still just a one, one flyer for one. That is true. It, it does have that. Uh, yeah, five, the 5-5 five, five gets out of Lava Coil range. If you make this a 5-5, five, 5-5 five, five, five flyers are, are huge. You know, like, those are just... Yeah, ever adapting this card, it's tough to, to catch down. Um, yeah, I, I think this is probably better than a B. I'm not sure about A range. So, I like, a lot of people are saying B, B plus, A minus. And I, I, like, I like one of those two, like the B plus to A minus. I think I'm going to go A minus... Uh, it's certainly certainly a really scary card, and I think it's going to be winning a lot of games. I'm kind of in, right in that range of the B plus to A minus. I'm not really sure if it's closer to A or closer to B. You know, if it's closer to like a Jade Light or a Branch Walker kind of thing. It's closer to like a Search for Escanto or a Sinister Sabotage as far as blue cards. Um, yeah, you can, you can adapt in response to their, their damage base spell for sure. Um, if you have Wilderness Reclamation... You don't wilderness reclamation with like four lands. You don't even need any instants or sorceries. Just tap four, then your wilderness uh, reclamation trigger. Untap your lands. Tap your mana to adapt again. But yeah, scary, scary card there. Here's an interesting one for a common quench. One in a blue counter target spell unless its controller pays two. So while I don't really like counter spells, I I like that this is a card and not mana leak. I do think Mana Leak's a tad too good. I don't think that this is just too bad to not see play. I think this is this is fine. I think this is a good um uh I think this is a good power level for a counter spell. I think this is a solid uh yeah, we got a lot of people a lot of people good ratings here. Like people are saying B, C plus, B minus. It's definitely not better than B. I don't. I don't know if this is better than Sinister Sabotage, but it's probably right around that level. So I'm. I'm thinking either B or B minus. I think it's right around the Sinister Sabotage um, level. But yeah, the Epic says this is an A if the meta ships too expensive spells. Absolutely. The more expensive the spells are in the format, the better for Quench. The thing is, is I'm. I'm kind of looking at like these Rakdos and Gruul and uh, cards that we've seen so far and I'm thinking this is maybe going to be a kind of a fast format and which may leave a card like Quench behind so I could actually see Quench not seeing like nearly as much play um but overall I, I like it um Gamer says the faster the format I think the better for Quench I guess that's that's true it is better early it is better than other counter spells uh in a fast format um if you want counter magic it is better than other you know, it's better than, like, Sinister Sabotage in a fast format, for example. Um, so that's true. I'm going B. I, I think it's right around that, that Sinister Sabotage level. I think this is a B. This is a good... This could see... That's a that's a very good point, that we could see more play for this for the, the faster format there. Yeah, I, I kind of like it. <laughs> you can play this into my aggressive Tithe Taker deck. Okay. To help protect your, your other spells there. 
blue has been has been better than white so far i think whenever we're kind of looking at the colors i've, I've been liking the the blue card so far but we haven't we haven't seemed to go through a lot of comments i think we're going to be get, looks like we're going through some some uh f's here in a little bit but our next card's a common sages row savant one in a blue for a 2-1 when sages row savant enters the battlefield scry two um people talk about maybe playing omen speaker sometimes which is like a one three scry one Scry 2 is kind of nice. It's got a, it's most likely an F, maybe an F+. Plus. I'll, give, I'll give this an F+. Plus. It does have like a, a decent ETB effect if, if something happens. It doesn't have... Yeah, it's a wizard. It doesn't have great creature types. Wizard's okay. I'll go F+. Plus. Senate Courier, 2 and a blue for a 1-4 flying, and you can pay 1 and a white to give it Vigilance. That's an F. Shimmer of Possibility is one in a blue for a sorcery. Look at the top four cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So this is just sorcery speed, um, impulse. You'd have to really want the dig and not care about the instant to play this over anticipate. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this was an instant. It was the reprint of Impulse. Yeah, but it's just Sorcery. So if you're playing some kind of combo deck where you want to dig, like four cards for two mana is is digging quite a bit. I like D there. A lot of people are kind of saying D or F or G. Does That's not that's not a grade, but <laughs> I like D. I could see, like, if you're playing some kind of combo deck where you're really trying to dig, uh, this this does it. And if, you, if you're not playing counter spells, you don't care about the instant speed, this does dig very well four is a lot of cards if you're playing a tap out control deck it's honestly not that bad in tap out tap out control deck um yeah if you're playing tap out control this card's actually pretty good so maybe d plus d plus that card that card is strong in, in a tap out control deck all right next card uncommon skate Wing spy of a dalkin rogue mutant Three and a blue for a two three that has um, an ability that says five and a blue for adapt two, and each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has flying. So the adapt two thing's not gonna matter. It's just whether or not if you can if giving all your creatures with one counters on them flying is worth a card, that's probably not worth a card. I'm giving it an F. Hey Big Pop, yeah, we've we've done white. We are currently on blue now. Uh, Skitter Eel is our next card. Three and a blue for a 3-3. Three, three, and it has just the ability two and a blue adapt to two. That's an F. Looks like we're getting towards our Fs a little bit here now. <laughs> uh, slime Bind, one and a blue enchant uh, enchantment aura. It has flash enchant creature. Enchant creature gets minus four, minus zero. We have seen, like, there was an energy version of this that saw some play that was really good against Heart of Kirin. Um, so it could be possible if, yeah, I'm gonna go D, D mi like D minus, or maybe D. This is very, very fringe. If you're playing like a blue control deck, kind of like a mono blue control deck and you need removal. Um, yeah, Aether Meltdown, yeah. But like Aether Meltdown also gave you energy that you could use. This doesn't even give you the energy. Um, D minus. All right, got a rare. Sphinx of Foresight. Two blue blue for a 4-4. Four, four. You may reveal this card from your opening hand. If you do, scry three at the beginning of your first upkeep. It's a 4-4 four, four flying creature that also has at the beginning of your upkeep scry one. How good is that? Reveal that from your opening hand if you do scry three. We have... This is a good card here. A lot of varying grades. We got C minus all the way to A with everything in between. We got a D plus. So for mono blue, is mono blue aggro going to want to play this too much? Um, it of course really helps you find Curious Obsession, which is really important for that deck. But it is a it is a four mana creature. Do they really want a four mana creature? Um, reveal four, scry three, four times. <laughs> yeah, you could you could do that. I, so yeah, we have 
people are saying a lot of Bs and B pluses. I think this is an easy B plus A minus. Good a Simic. Simic is a good card. It's a or it's a good in a Simic. Yeah, so a couple good Simic card and then good in a mid range Simic deck. It does die to Lava Coil. Um, as Lil Design says, this card is built for best of one. I kind of see that. It is seems like it's kind of good for best of one with that Scry three being so important. Um, honestly, I. I don't know if this is that good in standard. If we ignore the first thing, the reveal the card from your opening hand for just a, just a minute, if we just look at the rest of it, four mana, four, four flying at the beginning of your upkeep, scry one, that's not good enough for standard. That's That doesn't do enough. I don't think that that would see much play. Um, we've seen cards like that same rate with like Sphinxes before that didn't see see any play. I don't think four mana, four four flying, beginning your upkeep, scry one. I don't think that's good enough for standard. Um, especially, especially right now with lava coil being like the most played removal spell. So you'd have to really, really want that reveal this card from your opening hand if you do scry three. Um, and it's a, yeah, and it's so I don't know. And I also just don't know how valuable that is. Like, usually your opening hand, especially even best of one, how like best of one works with them looking at two, like generating two hands and like giving you the better of the two hands kind of thing. Usually your hand has like lands and spells in it, right? Like, you know, not all the time, but usually you have lands and spells. So if you're like scrying three and you don't know what your opponent's playing and it's like game one, and you have lands and spells already in your hand, and you look at like lands and spells, it's kind of hard. Like the Scry 3, I don't know if it's really that valuable. So I actually think this is. I, I don't. I'm actually not a very big fan of this card, um, and don't think it's going to make much of an impact on standard, honestly. Um, so it's certainly not a bad card, and it'll, it'll show up. I think this is a C. I think this is gonna like see some play. You'll you'll play against this card and everything, but I think a lot of people were kind of uh, thinking like overrating the Scry th three thing at the beginning of the game more than basically more. I think people are overrating it in my own opinion. I could be wrong, of course, you know, because we haven't seen a card like this before, so I certainly could be wrong. Scry three is of course valuable, but I don't. I don't know if it's as valuable as a lot of people believe it is. It does stack if you get more than one. You do not scry six if you get more than one. You just scry three once and then scry three again. So I'm going with a C with this. Um, I actually kind of think that and if it was ETB scry three, it would be a much better card than reveal it from your opening hand in scry three. I think scry three before the beginning of the game is the time when Scry 3 is the absolute least valuable. Um, because you already have like seven cards, you already have like things to do, like your first few turns, presumably, uh, kind of thing. L the later you go in the game, the more valuable Scry is. Because the later the game is, the more people are top decking, where like your draw steps matter so much more. Um, your first draw step of the game, whether it's a spell or a land kind of thing, doesn't usually determine who wins the game that much. So. Yep, this is this is a C-track team. Yeah, the EOD guy says, what are the chances that you have it in your opener? Um, I guess the chances would be like seven, or I, I guess it would be one out of 15, you have to hit one out, like if, you, if you're playing four, four out of 60 is like one out of 15, and so it'd be one out of 15, you know, like seven times, but each one gets a little better. I don't, I don't know, I could do the probability math, but it'd take a little bit, but there's there's probably some math out there that somebody says, like what's the chances you have a four of in your opener? But again, in, in standard, I think in older formats, that Scry 3 is more important also, in, in other formats. I think it's it's less important in standard, um, where standard's more about hitting hitting land drops and and you know uh, grinding out opponents and things like that. In older formats, uh, where decks are much more degenerate, the scry three at the beginning of your first upkeep is certainly more important. 
All right, our next card um, is an uncommon Swirling Torrent, five and a blue. What if it was Scry 2 of your opponent's deck? Oh, that'd be a lot more valuable, I think. Well, maybe not. Yeah, I mean, you just you just put you just make sure to give them lands or whatever, but then people just start keeping. I don't know. That's that's a weird that's weird mechanic. Scry your opponent's deck. That's weird. Anyway, this one looks this looks like to be an, an F five and a blue sorcery. Put target creature on top of its owner's library or re return target creature to its owner's library. You may choose both if you want. That's that's enough. Pour, pour this guy over here in the current. He's, or Wait, maybe that person's just like, actually, this looks like somebody that's at like the whirlpool and just like relaxing. And they're like, oh man, this is so comfortable. I think they're just, I think they're just having like on vacation. That's what it feels like. All right. Uh, we got a comment up next. Thought Collapse. It's pretty good art here. Uh, this is one blue blue for an instant counter target spell. Its controller puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. If you want to make mill happen, here you go. You get cancel with upside. We've certainly seen the cancels with upsides, before, you know, in standard. Sinister Sabotage is is the is like the main one right now, I think, um, where it's counter target spell surveil one. So instead of surveilling one, you're milling target player. Um, if you're playing a bunch of, this could be just better for you if you are playing a bunch of jumpstart cards and things like that. If you want to just like put three cards and try to hit chemistry's insights and things like that, it's not target player. Oh, it's not. Oh no, I misread it. I was misthinking it. Never mind. It's it's the controller. So it is certainly just a mill card. Never mind. Just a mill card. Good call. So yeah, mill. A good point here in chat. Mill is off is. A downside more often than not in standard. That's a good point. It can be there also. Super niche. This this gets a rating of M for mill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is a this is like a D, D minus. Yeah. I, I think it's a D. I think it's a good C play. Kind of like lookouts dispersal. Like you'll play against people to play it. Um, that want like a yeah like a fifth sense sabotage kind of thing with the like Zorb being in the format too. That's eh, like D minus. Yeah. F means no play. And that that would see a tiny bit of play, maybe. All right, we got one last rare and blue Verity Circle, two and a blue enchantment. Whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, if it isn't being declared as an attacker, you may draw a card. And four and a blue to tap target creature without flying. So anytime a creature is convoked or tapped for mana, or I guess those are the main reasons to. Uh, tap i suppose without being declared as an attacker you get to draw a card y'all y'all don't need to to cuss in chat no no reason to cuss there um but yeah it's certainly good against convoke so people are saying maybe a cyborg card uh or it works really well with with other things that tap stuff like sleep um yeah you still would lose the end of turn march with this um this could be a build around card. It's a good point by like that's a good point. I think this is more of a build around card. I don't think I don't think this is a cyborg card against Convoke. I don't think that I don't think that's the case. So I, I would not have this in, in the deck as a cyborg card. But I think this is a build around card where if you're trying to make a, a big mana prison deck, I think this also kind of goes with like the tithe card that we talked about earlier, where if you want to get a lot of mana, because I think you you gotta be able to use that to be able to play this card, you gotta be able to use the four and a blue. Um uh, ability kind of reasonably, I believe. Um, yeah, so that's exactly that's. I don't want to ignore that that part because I think that's the important part. Being able to just tap tap things. I think you you need to be able to use that ability. Um, does this work with enters the battlefield tapped cards? N I don't think so because I don't think that things that enter the battlefield tapped are things that become tapped. So I I don't believe so. If there's like a creature that says like it ETBs tapped. I don't think that works. Um, so yeah, so I think this is I think this is also probably like a maybe a, a D plus like it'll it'll barely see a little bit of play, kind of thing. Or build around it, you know, kind of like yeah. So I think that's like D D plus, but yeah, it does work with like sleep, 
um, if you want to draw some cards and be like a prison deck kind of thing. So I don't know if like putting Verity Circle and Sleep in your deck is worth the the chance of drawing like, you know, three cards if your opponent has three three creatures in play or whatever. But I think it's kind of a build around card. So I'm going D plus. Next up, Uncommon, Wall of Lost Thoughts, 1 in a blue, 04 Defender. When Wall of Lost Thoughts enters the battlefield, target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Um, if you want to if you want to play your mill deck, here you go. If you want to play Arcades, I guess this is a this is a two mana four four with our Ar with Arcades, which is kinda kind of a thing. Um So, yeah, I think because it can go in both of those, it may see just a tiny bit of play. So we're going to go D minus again. Or yeah, you want to build a creeping chill deck with all this smell stuff. I guess that could also be another deck like that. Uh, Windstorm Drake, four and a blue for a three, three flying creature. Other creatures you control with flying get plus one, plus zero. This is an F. I will not see any play. All right, so blue overall, I think stronger than white. I think we had a lot more interesting cards with blue here um, than we did with white. It seemed like basically all the rares, you could certainly see you know, some kind of scenario where they see play. And we saw a couple of strong cards as well. So it's still not like amazing or anything because it's only 30 cards. Again, a lot of this, this set is going to be focused on the multicolor cards. Um, but I think I think it looked a little bit better than white there. Yeah, we're we're talking taking the perspective of standard with the review. Yep. Def, uh just standard. Okay. So uh that's it for the blue part of the review. We've gone through white, gone through blue. Uh hopefully you come on back for part three if you're watching this over on YouTube. Also, of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for that as well. But thanks for watching.